Hey guys, Hello. Hello. Here with you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody's talking about this TV show that it's the biggest budget ever, very expensive. So, and I got curious, um, what guys did you have for lunch there? Caviar, oyster, sushi, <laughs> lobster. Every time I was trying to, I was trying to eat, I was eating a, a bit of my beard. No matter how wide I opened my mouth, and it's a big mouth, I couldn't, I couldn't. Chill. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. One day yeah, I'm going to try and get footage of a wine eating nuts uh, as <laughs> during. Yeah. It is the most hysterical. Because I'm trying to get the lips in fr in in front of the beard, so so kind of try to you have to. Yeah, yeah, we really thing. felt for him while we were like, "You okay?" We were fed very well. Breakfast yeah. is always my favorite. Yeah, breakfast was really good. Yeah, sort of anything you want, really. Yeah, almost a couple of courses. People say to truly know someone, give them power. Can be um, Middle Earth or can be nowadays. So why do you think that human being uh, gets so fascinated by power? I think it's to do with that. <laughs> How deep my voice went. <laughs> oh, no. Talking about power, you go. You're talking about power here. Um, well, actually, um, so I, th I think this world's a scary place. So I think power, sometimes people can be obsessed. They can go sideways sometimes and be an, an obsess about power in order to make that journey easier for themselves or that they don't get just eaten up by a bigger fish in the sea. And I think people can get caught up in that. And then, of course, you're in a vicious circle then. One of the themes that again and again crop up in Tolkien and are, is so central to this era of the mythology is the tension between mortality and immortality, right? The elves are immortal. But men, they die. And that feeling of their own mortality and fragility and limited time drives them to, to do great things and sometimes to do evil. But then you still see people who don't get corrupted. Yeah. Like exactly. Faramir, who said he wouldn't even pick up the ring if it was on the side of the road. Yes. Yeah. But you see even Gandalf is resistant to yeah. taking the ring because he, he's fearful of what it might do to him. Tolkien understood that infusion that that if I can have more power, I'm more in control, mm. I'm safer. And that's why people are drawn to powerful people. This person has power, he will protect us. So one thing that I love the most about the TV show is that, that we can see uh, ethnic diversity on the Lord of the Rings world. And I agree 100%, I was so happy with that. Uh, but some people, they were like, no, they don't agree. So how important is to stand up for this position? For me, it's about, um, yeah, be, being represented. For me, it's about uh, my daughter being able to now be, ex be as excited about Lord of the Rings and the franchise as many other children were before, but in a way that they weren't able to before, which is to be able to see themselves, to be able to know the possibility of being included in a franchise of this scale, to be able to see powerful characters. We're not just in it, we're representing a huge amount of power and necessity within the storyline so that we can reflect the power and necessity to have each and every presence within this world. Myself, Sophia, and perhaps a few others have been at the center of this yeah. opposition in a certain way or this reaction. And, you know, it is many of the things that are said and done, you know, are racist and are bigoted and, you know, it is appalling in that sense. But um, there is another side of that. And it is the um, hunger and desire and love that that fans or you know hope for this to exist to 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 happen and that is I think what we focus on those people that were um, needing to see themselves mm -hmm. and again I, I, I talk about this is very talky it's, it is a story of diversity it's a story about several different races coming together putting their what they have their best to get to a goal. Um dia esse reino vai ser seu. Raise your sail and then let go. I was to play a well-known character played by Kate Blanchett. Did you choose to watch the movies or did you choose to uh, keep distance of it? How was it? I've watched those movies so many times that I, I'm watching them now. <laughs> like, they're so in my mind. So no, I definitely went back to them. It's You always want to know where your character ends up. And I get to know completely where my character ends up and saw her like portrayed 
more beautifully than you could ever imagine. Um, so, yeah, it still pinched me that I'm playing Gladriel and that I'm sharing a character with someone like Kate Blanchett. We can say that it's a big responsibility to continue the Peter Jackson's movies. Yeah. But as fans, which I am, so that's why I yeah, have I to go here, you know. Oh. What things, what different things we fans can expect from the movies to the series? The differences are automatic because, you know, Frodo's adventures and Gollum and Gandalf, that's all in the third age. That's thousands of years from when our show is set. Our show is set in the second age. This is, you know, the height of uh, elven kingdoms. This is the height of the dwarven kingdom. Long before they were even known as hobbits, there were, you know, wandering days of halflings, three different branches of them, of, of ancestors of hobbits. Um, and uh, uh, so we're in a different era. It feels different. It's wilder. It's more vibrant. We're doing something, we're doing our own thing. You know, we're doing something different. We're hosting uh, a new generation of stories. Where, where my character Halbrand is from is from the Southlands. And the, the, the people of the Southlands are They've had it under right. elvish rule because they fought on the wrong side in the war at the end of the first age. Um, and then you have the Numenorians who are living at the, at the peak of their powers. So we are thinking of it as chapter one, like a blank slate. And there are mm -hmm. things that uh, run through, some characters that turn up later on, but a lot of it is a whole new take built from Tolkien's writing. So if your characters um, lived in modern world now in 2022. What work, what job they would have? They would have. Mine would be a singer songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. A, no doubt. About I think that. mine would be like high up in some political world somewhere. Yeah. You know? I'm trying to work out where he would be most useful. I think he'd probably honestly end up um, writing for some. Uh, like nasty magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Hal would be like an Olympic rower. A gondolier. A gondolier, yeah, in yeah. Venice. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how, I can't fathom Gladriel in this world. What would yeah, she? Like, yeah. She'd be some sort of oracle on top of a mountain still. She couldn't. Yeah, yeah. She, 